Peter, to me, that's so much the mystery here is how ignorant we are about what needs to be done in Southern Africa. We don't understand it's larger than America on a geographic basis. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you actually were to superimpose a, a map of the United States and the African continent, it would barely register. I mean, the African continent is vast geographically. <clears throat> and unfortunately, um, the, re what we've, the one lesson we've learned about the worst variants that we have is they arise out of large unvaccinated populations. Uh, the alpha variant arose out of an unvaccinated population in the UK in 2020, Delta out, out of an unvaccinated population in India in 2021, what did people think was going to happen uh, <clears throat> allowing Africa, yeah. the African continent, to go completely unvaccinated? This is not a hookworm, and you've been leading on this for decades. You did your PhD thesis at Rockefeller on uh, the horrific tropical diseases, the parasites, and, and all that. If you know the terrain, what holds the rich guys back from helping the poor guys? Is it, a, is it a, an economic constraint, a financial constraint, or is it a moral constraint? constraint. It was, you know, the way I see it, Tom, was a science policy failure. Um, it, the G7 countries were so fixed when this virus hit on speed and innovation that they all ran like a little kid's soccer game where the ball goes in one direction. It was all about mRNA technology and new, new and exciting, you know, what I sometimes say in my frustration, shiny new toys that that no one ever gave thought, as any you know, first-year engineering student will tell you, that when you have rely exclusively on a brand new technology, there's a learning curve be, before you can go from zero to nine billion doses or nine billion of anything, whether it's widgets or mRNA vaccines. If it's a brand new technology, there's a learning curve, and so there was never the situational awareness among the G7 leaders to say, "Hey, wait a minute, we also need to balance the portfolio with an older technology that we know we could scale in places." like India and Bangladesh and, and Indonesia and on the African continent. And that's what we did. So we've developed this recombinant protein vaccine. It's been licensed with no patents, no strings attached to vaccine developers in India, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and now with a developer linked to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. And we're doing it and we're making it. Um, but if we had even a fraction of the help that Moderna or Pfizer mm -hmm. had gotten from the G7 countries, we might have had the world vaccinated by now. Peter, you talked about policy failures. Is just imposing travel bans from Southern Africa a policy failure? I, I think it is. We, we've, we've learned that travel bans simply don't work. We learned this from the beginning, right? We remember how in, in February of 2020, everybody was so focused on travel bans from China. Meanwhile, the virus had already entered uh, into New York City from Southern Europe to ignite that horrific uh, epidemic in, in uh, across New York City. So we know that this virus is already spread around the world, and that's not because not because there's anything unique to Omicron. That's been true of every variant that we've uh, seen so far. By the time we identify a variant, it's already uh, it's already gone global. and uh, and so I think a lot of this is based on optics where the the especially in the European Union and now the u s, they want to show that they're doing something, and unfortunately, it's incredibly self-defeating. It actually impairs our ability to fight uh, the pandemic, number one, and number two, it punishes African countries, and number three, it hurts the economy because it spreads unnecessary panic among investors, and, and uh, so it's, it's a policy failure on all accounts. Well, we did see that panic in the markets taking shape on Friday. This Monday morning, we are getting a bit of a lift to them now as people really understand that we have very little information at this point. What information is most critical to ascertain first? There's three three things we need to know. One, about the severity of the illness. And so far, it, it does not look like this variant is producing anything unusual in terms of symptoms or severity of illness, but we'll know more. Second, we need to know if the vaccines, our current vaccines, will cross-protect against the Omicron variant. That's what we're doing in our lab, our laboratories this week with our vaccine, as is, I'm sure, Pfizer and Moderna. And the way you do that is you measure, you look at antibody responses to your vaccines and show that it crosses, neutralizes the Omicron variant or, or what's called a pseudovirus uh, variant. And we'll know that in, in the coming days. I think there's yeah. a good possibility that with the third immunizations and, and that boost, 
that you'll get enough right. virus neutralizing antibodies to cross protect at least partially. I, I don't know that for certain, but but that that's yeah. the hope. And then we really need to understand the transmissibility. We don't know that. Peter, one final question. I really looked at the vaccination trends this morning, and I I, I think what we're going to hear from the president is we need to get from 59 percent vaccinated to 69 percent vaccinated. How quickly is that doable? Well, 69 percent, unfortunately, won't cut it. We need 85 percent of the U.S. population vaccinated. And, you know, Tom, we've got this horrific situation in the United States where since June 1, 2021, 150,000 Americans who refused vaccinations needlessly perished from COVID-19, 150,000. So anti-science, defiance and aggression is now a leading mm -hmm. killer of, of yeah. young Americans in the United States. And as long as we have that defiance, it's going to be hard to see how we get to that 85% level. 